can these bones live? The way things were looking, it was doubtful. And so instead of answering with a resounding yes or no as he surveyed the surrounding scene of devastation, Ezekiel's response to God was, only the, you know the answer to that one, God. Ezekiel, along with many others in Israel, had been deported to Babylon following their nation's defeat by the Babylonian Empire. And things were beginning to look bleak and hopeless for them ever seeing their homeland again. So God gave Ezekiel a tour through a valley filled with bones, bones that symbolized these exiles cut off from their home and from the rest of their, the people. We're told that they were dry bones, so they had been that way for quite some time. Our world today is also covered with dry bones which have been around for a while. In Gaza, the dry bones of innocent Palestinians are beginning to pile up as disposable victims of the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. And if I were asked if a spirit of life would ever return to that area of the world like Ezekiel, my answer would probably be along the lines of, who knows? Closer to home, our streets are also littered with dry bones. The dry bones of people of color who fear for their lives at the hands of white people. The dry bones of trans people and same-sex loving people who fear for their civil rights at the hands of conservative lawmakers. The dry bones of Jews and Muslims who fear persecution at the hands of homegrown Christian terrorists. Dry bones everywhere. And it's so embedded within our systems and institutions that it's almost impossible to imagine that these dry bones can live. Even closer to home for many of us is the 14 months of the COVID pandemic that have eaten away at our spirits, cutting us off from other people, trapping us within the cocoons of our homes, and changing our lives in ways we never could have dreamed of. Friends and loved ones have died and we have felt unsafe to even attend their funerals. Wedding celebrations have been postponed out of fear for our health. We are grateful for the technology that allows us to worship virtually, but it's just not the same. And I know of several within our own faith community whose commitment to the care of their aging loved ones keeps them from connecting with others despite the relaxation of health restrictions. Our bones are weary and dry and lifeless. And for some of us, we can't imagine that we will ever be restored to wholeness again. Can these bones live? God only knows. And so in our text, Ezekiel is assured that God does indeed know. God's spirit descends on the valley and God breathes new life into the bones despite their dryness. It was the same breath, the same winds of God that swept over the face of the waters at the beginning of time, giving rise to the creation of the heavens and the earth. It was the breath that God breathed into the nostrils of a lifeless creature that had been fashioned out of mud and in so doing infused it with God's spirit and giving birth to humankind. It was the same mighty rushing wind that descended upon the faithful believers on the day of Pentecost, empowering them to speak in other languages and marking the beginnings of the Christian church. It was that same Spirit of God 
which inspired four or five people to begin to meet for worship in the back room of a local club, a group that continued to meet wherever possible, in private homes or even in the park throughout the first year. And it was this month, 35 years ago, that the group was officially recognized as MCC Waco. And it's that same spirit of God which draws all of us together this morning after 63 weeks of separation. This wind, this breath of God, this, this spirit of rebirth and renewal filled the valley in which Ezekiel found himself. And our text says they came alive and stood up on their feet a vast multitude. God's Spirit gives us the ability to return to life and to rise again. Thus says Sovereign God, I am going to open your graves and raise you up from the dead, my people. I will return you to the land of Israel. When I open your graves and raise you up, you, my people, will know that I am God. Then I will put my spirit within you and you will return to life and I will settle you back on your land. Then you will know that I, God, have spoken and made all this happen. This closing to this morning's text is God's promise of God's renewal. God will open our graves and raise us up. God's Spirit will be put into us and we will return to life. We will resume life and things will eventually return to normal. That is the hope that can only come from a God who is in the business of resurrection. In the words of Bible commentator Doug Bratt, this is gospel for those who feel alienated from God or the people to whom they want to be close. Death may surround, fill, and even chase us, but God is in the business of restoring hope by raising the dead to life and breathing new life into people, relationships, and even communities. But it's important to remember that this morning's miracle of rebirth and renewal wasn't just God's doing, but happened out of the partnership between Ezekiel and God. Ezekiel had to be willing to obey what God commanded of him. God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones to come together, and he did. And God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the four winds to infuse the spirit of life into the bones, and he did. I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came into them, and they came alive. Friends, Renewal is hard work. It doesn't just happen by God waving a magic wand and teleporting us into a new and happy life. It's up to us to partner with God and share the workload. That means prophesying to the four winds, spreading the good news through the through word of mouth and social media that we are open for business. It means rolling up our sleeves and shoveling out the mess that has accumulated in our absence. It means committing to the support of the church with your prayers, a portion of your finances, and your time and energy. And it means never again taking for granted the coming together with your faith family for worship. It means supporting them spiritually and emotionally in person. Today is a day of celebration. 
So let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's celebrate the Spirit of God which breathes new life into us. Let's anticipate the good things that God has in store for us. Let's partner with God in co-creating a new thing, a thing that gives glory and honor to God, a thing that brings hope to the world. Amen.